Hey, YouTube people. Um, I got a request. I got a request. The dog's freaking out. To uh, to show my um, ISO caps that I have my speakers in, and that's what I'm doing. I'm down in the basement here. And I've got a little room way in the back. As you can see, very low basement, um, and it's a uh, it's very very thick old you know rocks. A uh, big wall, so to the outside, not much coming out, but it's still too loud because I've got a neighbor, we're sharing a wall. So, um, what I'm doing here, wait a second. Congo, shut it! Nine! So, as you can hear, you can hear the dog through the wall. So, I'm going to show you what uh, these look like and how you can build your own. So, here we've got a big one. And that actually, it's pretty dark, contains an Ignator 112 and a Blackheart 112. And all the cables in here, so there's a snake for the microphone cables. And all the mic cables and the speaker snake is going through the wall into the studio. So in the studio you can't really, can't really see anything there. So, there is 14412, we'll look at that in a sec but I'm going to show you what this actually sounds like. So for that, Congo, it's okay, it's just me. So right now, we've got a very big box here with three individual three individual uh, speakers in it, and that's the one in the middle. And um, I'm hooked up to a 100 watt amp, kind of cranked up, we're like 10 o'clock, so that's already kind of loud. If I was in the room with the speaker by itself, it would be way too loud, and in no house in the world you could actually crank that up, but here... <laughs> talk you can probably still hear me it's not you know nothing so now we're gonna open the box it's very important that you close the lid tightly that's why I have these hinges these lid closing things okay and as you can see as you can see there's three speakers a 110, a 112, and another 112. I'm just going to play it with the lid open. pretty muffled this would be a lot louder but the speaker is still enclosed in acoustic foam the the main sound is still going against a little wall which is muffled so this would be even louder so you really can't have that volume running anywhere so most of you would probably need something like this which is a box for one 112 speaker so what I did here is, they're pretty much just kitchen countertops that you can get at your local hardware store. And I took the measurements and went there and had them cut directly there. All I had to do is just come in here and screw them together. These are also kitchen countertop. So I just made three cells if you want. And um, important to have a little thing on the edge for the cables so that you can close the lid in here. You could also, of course, just have a plug right here. If you can do some soldering, you know, you can just plug right in. But for me, that is totally fine to have the cables um, run through there. So in here, everything is um, lined with acoustic foam. This is Aurelex. This is very good stuff. One of these will run you about 30 bucks but it's definitely worth it. And um, you can use any acoustic foam. Of course, the thicker, the better. This Aurelex stuff, as you can see, 
I think it's four centimeters, so that's quite a bit. And very important to have absolute tightness. This is actually window sealer. It's adhesive and you know costs you a bit, 10 bucks or something for like five meters. But once the lid closes on this, you have an actual tight seal. So that's really important to have that seal be tight. Okay, um, let me close this back up. They are not glued in any way. So they're literally just screws driven through the sides. The problem is once you put it together and you have a frame, you put the, the main base down and then you put all the um, boards on the side. That would also mean that your, that your top would actually just fall through. So you have to make sure that your top is deeper than it actually you know, is coming from the hardware store. And how I did this is like this. As you can see, this is actually a piece this long added onto the top. So this is 60 centimeters deep, but I had to add a piece on. And in the back, it's this much wider than the top. You can clearly see this because here you can see there's also a piece added on that was here, model number one. This one I have on wheels, on little casters, which is very nice um, if you actually want to move it around the room at home, um, wherever you have it, because these things get so heavy, there is no way you can actually move this. So let me show you this one. Let's see if you can actually move it a bit. So I can open this. Oh. It's a 112. You definitely have more options of positioning the speaker in here if you're using a Sennheiser E606 or E6, uh, E906 because it doesn't use up that much space. It just hangs in front, so you have more uh, options. With an SM57, it uses up a lot of the depth of the box. And here, as you can see, the sealant again. And it's just screwed together. This is double-sided tape that holds the, the foam. You can also use spray uh, adhesive. There's the slit for the cable. And that really is it. So from the studio now, oops, from the studio, I can very easily pick any of these seven speakers because I just, that didn't work. Um, I just have the seven cables nicely labeled and then I can pick which speaker I want and I have a patch bay in which I can just pick which microphone I want. Now this beast, if you're actually nuts enough to want to mic a 412 cap and we never have here, all these 112s and 110 are totally fine uh, and for a sound probably better because you don't have uh, face problems. But this mega beast is for a 412 and um it eats up a lot of wood and as you can see on top because of the depth I actually had to do one board and then add on to it okay so this is ginormous and I'm gonna try to open it this is something like Tim Pierce uses in his um, garage because Tim Pierce really just only has a 412 in his garage mic with two microphones this door is extremely heavy so we have five hinges here two of them being very very long and very heavy duty because this door is heavy so there you go and right now I've got a 212 in there from Blackstar right now no mic but um it's a big 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 box you can get any kind of speaker in there any 412 uh, even you know XXL big ones um, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to mic them, but if someone comes with a 412, I definitely have the cap for it. We even had a Fryette 412 in there, 
including the deliverance top, all in the box, which you don't want to do. You don't want to do that for too long because, of course, the amp is uh, getting warm, so you don't want that. So there you go. That's for 412. We've got two 112s in there, but there's more space, so I, I, I'm more flexible in there. There's a 112, a 112, and a 110, and another 112. For most of you, the one for the 112, maybe a little bit longer, so you could put a 212 in there, would be fine. Just plan the measurements. As you can see, this is a board. That's the front. There's another board there. Here, a little bit different design. Just one main board. Just the screws going right in there. Right there. That's how it's how it's done. And um yeah, just screw them together. Here see, just uh, connection boards to connect the elongation. And um that is it. Something like this will run you probably about 150 bucks. Um the ones I've got in here we're talking about like 800. But I have a studio, you know, most of you probably will be totally okay with this. So, I'm gonna go and uh, leave this dark basement, which I never come into. I never have to mic my speakers, I never have to do anything. I just, you know, go and plug them in. So I just Well, since we're here, now we're in the studio, there are the speakers. And you can see, if I go back here, there are the speaker cables. So all I gotta do is, black heart, it's got 16 ohm, 16 ohms, so I go plug that in wherever I want and the cable is actually running through this pole, through this column in the back, there are holes, comes out here and then runs down into the basement. This is what you saw from the other side. So the snake comes the same way and goes into my patch bay right here. So I can pick this red cable right here, I can pick the igniter, the line 6, the fender, the angle, and I can pick my different speakers by doing this and go straight to my preamp. So most of you, you know, would have one speaker, so that's totally fine. But uh, okay, now I gotta cut this together.